welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm Jean Shafiroff, your host. This show is designed to highlight leaders in philanthropy here on the eastern end of Long Island and then beyond. And today with us, we have a very special guest, a man who is doing tremendously good work in the area of food, and specifically food pantries. So let's all welcome Paul Pachter. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Long Island Cares. Paul, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be with you. Yes, and so tell me a little bit about Long Island Cares. What are you exactly? I understand, I know what you are. You're mm -hmm. a food pantry for mm -hmm. all of Long Island. Yep. But how many meals exactly are you sending out weekly? And what does this mean to the people of Long Island? Well, you know, to go back for a second, Jean, Long Island Cares is recognized as the regional food bank for Nassau and Suffolk County. Uh, as the food bank, we provide emergency food to local community organizations that are on the front line of responding to food insecurity. And so currently now on Long Island, uh, there are approximately 370 organizations who receive more than half their food from Long Island Cares. So you're so, providing food mm -hmm. to about 150 food banks on Long Island, is that well, correct? We are providing food to actually about 370 organizations, of which the majority are food pantries. So if you look at the East End and organizations like uh, Heart of the Hamptons or Community, Advocate, uh, Community Action for South Hold Town, the CAS program, uh, we provide them with a bunch of their food, in fact, the majority of their food. In addition, Long Island Cares has six locations throughout Long Island where we operate our own emergency food pantry. Uh, one of them is located here on the East End. It's the Hunger Assistance and Humanitarian Center of the Hamptons. And where is that? It's in Hampton Bays. And that's new, right? It opened up March 1st, yeah. Right during the, or the, at the very beginning days of this pandemic. Before we got involved in COVID-19. Yes, and as our viewers know, we are in the middle of a horrific uh, pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, and we have a situation in this country where over 40 million people have been out of work. And what does that translate to for most people? That translates to no food on the table. And that means people can't feed their families, they can't feed their pets. It's a terrible, terrible situation we are in. And with so many people out of work, it's frightening. So Long Island Cares has addressed this problem here on all of Long Island in a really, a really wonderful way. And so now getting back to the center that you've just uh, opened up in mm -hmm. Hampton Bays, um, people often think, well, the Hamptons, it's a rich, a rich community. What do we need to help people in the Hamptons for? It's all billionaires and millionaires, <laughs> but that's not true. Just like anywhere else in the United States, we have uh, the super wealthy, we have the middle class, and then we have many, many people who live at or below the poverty level. And right now, during this food crisis, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have terrible insecurity in the way of food, where people don't have food for their families and they don't have food for their pets. So going back to what you're doing in Hampton Bays, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that center specifically. Sure. Well, you know, about 10 years ago, uh, we did a study of all of our organizations that we support. Uh, it was a study on capacity and distribution. And we asked the question of people at the height of the recession, if you could expand your operations, would you do it? and about 85% responded that they wouldn't, they couldn't, because most of the pantries are operated by volunteers, and most of the volunteers are elderly. Which is wonderful when you think about it, yeah. people volunteering their time. Yeah. And especially when you look at the majority of the pantries don't have paid staff. It, it's all voluntarily run. But we decided 10 years ago to begin to open up our own emergency food pantries. And we looked at high-need communities, so we have a location in Freeport, one in Huntington Station, uh, two in Lindenhurst, and the new one in Hampton Bays. And the reason we came to Hampton Bays 
was exactly for what you just said. People don't understand that there are pockets of affluence on Long Island. And yes, you can drive through the Hamptons all the way to Montauk and find, you know, incredible estates and the rich and famous who live here. But the majority of Long Islanders today are living paycheck to paycheck. That's right. And you don't see the poverty. It's sort of a right. hidden poverty here in the Hamptons, mm -hmm. but it exists in a very big way. And it's, a, it's something that we as people who live here on the eastern end of Long Island have to address. All of America has to address the, the poverty that's here in our midst and then caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. And so tell me now, I understand that the Long Island Cares was founded by Harry Chapin. And for our young viewers who don't know who Harry Chapin was, Harry Chapin was one of the biggest pop artist, musical pop artist, and folk pop artist of the 1970s. And he was very, very famous. And when he was in his 30s, he founded this organization. So here we have this wonderful celebrity, Harry Chapin, in his 30s, who decided to open up or start a food pantry. And so can you tell me a little bit more about Harry Chapin and, and, and what he has meant to your organization? Well, you know, Harry, in addition to being recognized as a songwriter and a storyteller, was very highly respected as a social advocate, an activist. And really, nice. he, this was his passion, ending hunger. So in 1975, on a global scale, he founded an organization called World Hunger Years. In 1980, he was responsible for having President Jimmy Carter at the time establish the White House, uh, it was a commission on hunger, which Harry was a member of. In fact, he attended every one of their meetings. And in 1980, he really was challenged by his friends and his colleagues to, well, look in your own backyard, you know, isn't there hunger on Long Island? And at that point in time, there was about 50,000 people considered to be living at the poverty level. Today, it's 259,000 people. 259,000 mm -hmm. people today at the poverty level yeah. on Long Island. Who are hungry. This is very hard to believe. Yeah. So Harry Chapin then decided to get involved or start your organization. Is that Absolutely. what happened? He uh, approached the county executives of both Nassau and Suffolk at the time to ask them if they would contribute to it, if they would give him money, a contract. Uh, New York State gave him property in Brentwood on the grounds of Pilgrim Psychiatric Center to open up Long Island Cares. And uh, here we are now, 40 years later, still here, still doing the work. Yes, and for our viewers who don't know the very sad s story about Harry Chapin, he, he founded this organization, Long Island Cares, in 1980, and then one year later, he was killed in a tractor-trailer accident on the Long Island Expressway. He was only 38 years old. This is such a tragedy. All of America was heartbroken. Here you had this famous, famous uh, uh, musician who was, all of his music was on the top 10 charts, mm. and here he was doing all this philanthropic work, and his life ended. Really a true tra tragedy. And uh, today I understand that uh, Billy Joel is involved with supporting Long Island Cares, which I think is fan fantastic. We all love Billy Joel <laughs> here on the Eastern End, and I don't care whether you're young or you're old. Billy Joel, you're an icon if you're watching. We love you, and uh, your music is great. My kids love your music. My husband and I love your music. And tell me, what has Billy Joel done for Long Island Cares. He's well, done a lot, and I know he doesn't like to talk about it, so only mention what you can, okay? <laughs> well, it's true, he doesn't like to talk about it. Uh, he has been involved with us probably for the past 10 years. Wonderful. Uh, he makes an annual donation to the organization, and as some people will recall, in 2013, he broke his 11-year retirement, or semi-retirement, and uh, did a concert at the Paramount in Huntington, which he turned into a benefit for Long Island Cares. 
uh, and he usually doesn't do things like that. It's really wonderful. So, you know, he's been instrumental in helping us get uh, our Hampton Bay satellite retrofitted to deal with COVID-19. Uh, he's been very supportive towards us. Uh, anytime we ask him for anything, whether it's to sign a piano or is there a piece of memorabilia to donate, you know, to one of our fundraising efforts, he, he's always been there for us. And I've had the pleasure of sitting down and talking to him twice uh, in the last few years. <laughs> he's, he's a terrific guy. Well, I'm a fan. Good. And then yes. you've had other celebrities who get involved, correct? And I don't know if you want to talk about them. But I think that our viewers would like to hear, because here in East Hampton, we have so many celebrities doing good things, and we have regular citizens. And all of you know that in order to be a philanthropist, it's not about writing the biggest check, because most of us can't. What we can do, though, is we can volunteer and give our time and knowledge. And then those that have wealth and those that who have a, not tremendous wealth but have some money we have an obligation to do something. I believe as Americans and as people, human beings, we must all get involved in helping those that have less than we do. And I think it's critically important. So if you want to share a few more stories, I know the viewers would love to hear. Well, you know, historically, look, Harry was a musician and he had a lot of colleagues that he worked with, so we've been able in the last 13 years that I've been at Long Island Cares uh, to tap into the generosity of people like Bruce Springsteen, uh, Dee Snyder's done stuff for us, Run DMC has done things for us. Uh, we've had events where Judy Collins came and performed, and Peter Yarrow came and performed, and Felix Cavalieri of the Rascals came and performed. Uh, you know, people remember Harry Chapin with just a, a lot of love. You know, some of the greatest stories I've really heard about Harry's life honestly came from Billy Joel because in the early 70s when Harry was writing the charts, Billy Joel was a new artist. His first tour was opening up for Harry Chapin. And here these are, they are, two Long Islanders. I who love were going it. <laughs> out on the road together. And, you know, if you met Harry Chapin, you walked away, number one, believing what he said. You, you could honestly embrace what he was doing and you had tremendous respect. And the music industry, uh, which he was part of, uh, has embraced this organization since the day it started. It and, so uh, wonderful. It's one of our proudest accomplishments is our relationship to the organized music community. Yes, and what you do is so important because with hunger in the United States at an all-time high because of the COVID-19 pandemic, our food banks and our food pantries are key to most Americans, the Americans who are now out of work and who are having difficulty paying rent, feeding a family, feeding the animals. So tell me a little bit now about how, how, how much greater a need is there now than, say, a year ago? Well, what we're looking at right now, based upon the amount of food we're distributing and what we're bringing in, is a 40% increase in the number of people here on Long Island that are using the pantries for the exact reason you mentioned earlier in your comments, and that is that there are people who are living paycheck to paycheck here. If you look on the East End, we have a very high immigrant population. That's right. Working mm -hmm. in the hospitality industry, mm -hmm. working in the agricultural industry. Yes. These are people that are making minimum wage. These are people that don't have health insurance. Mm -hmm. They're people who don't own houses. They're living multiple family dwellings. And so COVID-19 comes and basically pulls the ground out from under them. They're being furloughed. They're being laid off. They're being terminated. Uh, people then have to find out without a paycheck, how am I going to feed myself? How am I going to feed my family? going to the supermarkets, you can barely find what you need because people are hoarding food during the pandemic. And so what we're looking at specifically on the East End right now is between 12 and 15,000 people who are struggling yes. with food insecurity due to COVID-19. And that's why the relationship that we have with our member agencies on the East End is so important and more important for people to realize that too many people on Long Island are struggling to live here and keep a quality of life. And it doesn't make a difference what you earned when you're not working, you're not working. 
and COVID-19 meant for a lot of people, they're not going back to work. It's, it's a very, very tough time. And I know uh, my husband and I got involved with supporting Heart of the Hamptons <laughs> out here, which is based in Southampton. And then I personally got involved in advocating for food pantries on TV and radio because there is such a great need right now for food across America. And so I did a little research on your organization. <laughs> and I, being um, someone involved in philanthropy and as the author of the book, Successful Philanthropy, How to Make a Life by What You Give, I like to check out who's going to sh come up on my show and what the organization is all about. And I was very happy to see, Paul, that on the guide um, and charity navigator website, which is the, the, a website that rates charities, and Long Island Cares had a four-star rating, which is very difficult to achieve. And so what that means is that this organization absolutely is managing their money well. And all of us who donate, that's one of the key things we think about. Well, I don't mind writing a check, but where is my money going? And I want to make sure that that money is being used wisely and that the people who really need the money, those that are being serviced by a ch the charity, are the recipients of what that charity does. And so congratulations Thanks. on that four-star rating because that means a lot to the donors. Sure. And I really, I guess you keep a low overhead, is that correct? Well, 91 cents of every dollar that's donated to Long Island Cares is invested in our programs. I think the other reason I think people uh, are happy with what we're doing is that we're committed to being transparent in yes. how we spend our money. And, you know, we're very thankful for every dollar that we raise. Uh, you know, this has been an in incredible time uh, for the organization because, you know, people want to help. And, you know, we're getting donations from all over the country. Uh, it's not just coming in from Long Island mm -hmm. or New York. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we try to invest our money uh, in promoting what we do mm -hmm. so that people understand what we're about. And I think people respond to that. And, you know, it's a blessing for us, Gene, because 40 years after Harry is gone, his fans are still out there. And I understand his family's still involved. Yes. And yep. that's really a wonderful thing. And you're carrying on the legacy <laughs> of Harry yeah. Chapin through food pantries and, and feeding hungry people, which I think is great. And for our viewers, this is uh, Gene Shafferoff. The show is Successful Philanthropy. With me today is Paul Pachter. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Long Island Cares, a wonderful organization feeding the hungry all over Long Island. And Paul, what if someone uh, wants to volunteer? And what I knew and learned about volunteers at most of the food banks across the United States was that many of them are in their 60s and 70s. They retire and then they're looking for something to do. So these are acting philanthropists in my mind. But mm -hmm. tell me, what percentage of your uh, employee base is actually not on salary, but mm -hmm. um, in the volunteer pool? The majority of people Wonderful. that do work for Long Island cares of volunteers. We have 53 staff people uh, on salary. During COVID-19, we now have 82 staff people uh, because we're now operating out of 26 distribution centers throughout the island. But when we open up a center like we did in Hampton Bays, we hire one staff person to be the coordinator. And then they're joined by anywhere between four and eight volunteers. Uh, when we opened up in Hampton Bays, we had volunteers waiting outside the building to Isn't come Isn't that help wonderful? Us. I can't think of anything more noble than to volunteer your time to help those in need. And so if I, say, wanted to volunteer, mm -hmm. how do I do that? Do I have to fill out an application? Do you vet me? Do you do you do a, a research background check on me? What do you do, Paul? Because I think a lot of people, they say, well, I want to volunteer, but I'm not sure that I'm good enough or that 
I have anything to offer and mm -hmm. never feel that way. That's not true because every single one of us has something that we can offer and by volunteering you're changing a life and never forget that because all of us count. So mm -hmm. what, what does someone need to do? All of the above and the reason I say that is because of this. If anyone wants to volunteer at Long Island Cares or even at any one of our member agencies, uh, they log on to our website at licares.org, hit the volunteer link, and the application comes out. Uh, once they fill out the application, we then do vet people. But because of what we do, our programs, we do a lot of mobile outreach and delivery of food to seniors, to veterans, to the homeless, to children. Uh, because of that, we do background checks on people who want to so volunteer you have with to. us. We yes. ha have to. And I to don't think there's the anything law. wrong with that because you want to make sure that the organization maintains its stellar four-star um, reputation. And um, before I ask you about how to donate, I mm -hmm. want to hear a little bit about what you do to solve the hunger situation with our children here on mm -hmm. Long Island. Because as a mother of two daughters, I can't think of anything worse in the world than not to have food on the table for children. And me, I would rather go hungry than to see children on Long Island go hungry. I could eat less. Maybe I'll lose a few pounds. That <laughs> wouldn't be a bad thing. But to see children without food, in order for a child to learn, their brain needs food, in order for that child to flourish and grow, his, his, he or she needs food for the body, for the, the human cells. So I understand you're doing a lot for children, mm. and I would like you to tell our viewers a little bit about exactly what that work is. Well, children have been a priority for us for the past 10 years. There are 79,000 children here on Long Island who are food insecure. Many Terrible. of them rely upon the free or reduced school meal program. Uh, of course, COVID-19 completely turned that model upside down because schools aren't open. But what we do, uh, for children is we have an after-school program called Kids Cafe where uh, we partner with Boys and Girls Clubs here on Long Island and it's an after-school mentoring program. So the child will go after school to the Boys and Girls Club for socialization, recreation, remedial help. And then and they get food? we provide the dinner uh, for those children. Wonderful. We also work with about 17 school districts right now on a program called Pack It Up for Kids where come Fridays we deliver food to the school, they put the food in the child's backpack, it goes home with them for the weekend. And then lastly, another we, great program, we really. started uh, talk about philanthropy. Uh, corporations uh, worked with us in developing two food trucks so that on the weekends and in, on holidays we have two food trucks that go out into the community to our member agencies where children are invited and we provide a grab-and-go breakfast uh, and for those children. Wonderful. So you you are halting hunger or helping to greatly reduce hunger in children yes. on Long Island. And we're starting to run out of time, but we have a few minutes mm -hmm. left. And I want to know quickly. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with ARF, Animal Rescue Fund, and 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 how you're partnering to help people who have pets and who maybe can't afford the food right now. What are you doing uh, and working with ARF? We have an ARF here in East Hampton that's a wonderful, wonderful organization. Well, Ten years ago, we launched a program called Baxter's Pet Pantry uh, to provide free pet food and pet supplies to families who are struggling. Nice. If you can't feed yourself, how could you feed your pet? You can't. And, you know, in 2008, 2009, during the Great Depression, too many families on Long Island were giving up their pets to the shelters filling up the shelters mm -hmm. and we reached out to people and asked why. They can't afford the food, they can't afford the veterinarians. So we established a relationship with ARF which resulted in truckloads of pet food being donated to Long Island Cares and in the past 10 years Baxter's Pet Pantry has been supported by Petco, Pet Supplies Plus, PetSmart, uh, Healthy Extension, ARF, Walmart, Target, uh, and the supermarkets. Everyone knows that we have this pet pantry. It became so popular, Gene, that 
This past year, we opened up a freestanding Baxter's Pet Pantry in the village of Lindenhurst. And the donations keep coming and coming for Baxter's. And I'll say something that you as a philanthropist and a leader in the industry will understand better than most. If you had your choice, at least on Long Island, of providing food to a person or an animal, what would you do first? I can tell you uh, well, I Baxter's would, is doing very well. <laughs> no, <but> I, <laughs> I would, I, per, people first, and I'm an animal lover, uh -huh. and I just, I'm involved with a group called American Humane, and we mm -hmm. have, I happen to be the national spokesperson for their Feeding the Hungry program, which is a program to feed um, animals across the United States at different shelters. So mm -hmm. I particularly love what you're doing, and we have a goal of raising a million dollars. We're past the halfway mark, mm -hmm. um, and, but I'm loving what you're doing. And what I've learned as a philanthropist is collectively, we can all do great things. We have, um, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of charities in the United States. And here, Paul, I'm just so impressed with what you're done and you. what you continue to do. How can people donate? Very important. We have just 30 seconds mm -hmm. left, but briefly give us the website. And even if your donation is small, $20, $50, $100, or if you want to write a million dollars, here's the website. licares.org. Click on the donate link. And, and it's that easy. Thank you so much. And thank you. Uh, this concludes a successful philanthropy with today's um, guest, Paul Pachter of Long Island Cares. And remember, all of us can be philanthropists. Thank you and God bless you.